You can put a green roof, don't worry, because if you've got a vertical surface, you can employ exactly the same technology. This extraordinary lush and humid green wall exhibit is typical of what happens when horticultural technology collides with design inspiration. It's what Chelsea Flower Show is all about. And this may be a first at Chelsea, but the idea has already taken root. At the heart of Paris sits one of the most instantly recognisable and iconic architectural structures on the planet. What Eiffel constructed in 1889 was cutting edge, and this city has led the way in innovative design ever since. Yet at a time when modern architecture is squeezed into the smallest of spaces, it seems almost impossible to find room for a piece of urban green. But the ingenious designs of Patrick Blanc work in harmony with contemporary architecture because he simply gardens up the walls. When I was 19 years old, uh, I did go for the first time in Malaysia and Thailand. I see that plants were growing everywhere in the forest, on the rocks, on the tree trunks, on the branches. And I wanted, when I came back to home, parents' home, to, to do the same. People, when they are looking at my walls, they think they are in front of something very natural and usually very tropical. It's very funny because when you are at Kebonli, it's only temperate plants. A lot of these plants we're more familiar seeing as ground cover. I mean, the heuchera, for instance. Ground cover is stupid. Quite, quite unusual to see it for stupid. us to see it growing up a wall. You do, uh, never see a kera in well, the uh, wild. Maybe, maybe this far in off wild. the ground. No, but, but in wild, you know, a keras are growing in uh, North America, eh? and they're always growing on the rocks. Not all of these plants are shade-loving plants. You, no, you, you blend the, the shade-loving and the more moisture-loving with some which are really quite drought-tolerant and, and even drought-loving. Of course, I put at the bottom of the wall all the shade and moisture-loving plants. At the top of the vegetal walls, of course, I put plants which like much more light, which can withstand more difference in temperature between winter and summer, between night and day. Are there any plants that you wouldn't include in your tapestry? Uh, many plants I never use. Never, for instance, uh, roses, which are growing always in a very, very deep soil. <clears throat> I use only plants which in the wild are growing on the rocks or some, something similar to the rocks. Surprised to see the, uh, the wallflower in yes, here. Yes, wallflower. Yeah, again, we see that as a, as a bedding plant. Yeah, but uh, wall, wh wh why, why, why you call it, why is it wall called the wallflower? wallflower? Exactly. <laughs> The wall is composed of a layer of rot-proof felt that provides good capillary action. This is stapled on top of a waterproof layer of PVC, and that in turn is attached to a metal framework. There isn't a bit of soil in sight. Irrigation water is enriched with a high level of nutrients and allowed to run down through the entire wall into a trough where surplus is returned to the top of the wall. How do you go about maintaining them? Quite easy to maintain. They come down exactly in the same way as they could clean the windows. And uh, I tell them, oh, you have to cut this, you have to cut this. And uh, so it's very, very simple, only, only two times a year. The roots of the plants don't cause any structural damage. It's when they have to search for water and food that they cause big problems. But if you give them enough water regularly, they only spread superficially and leave the wall unharmed. The wall uh, progressively has its own way of life, and uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm invited to look at it. So <laughs> you, you start the process, but then you allow yes. nature to take over. Yes, yeah. Tell me about Biash Film. Biash Film is a very, very interesting project because it is in the heart of the old Paris. Very small streets. Now it's a very fashionable place, but not so much light. And what is important, where you have no plants, no living things except human beings, of course. I wanted to show that even in the heart of Paris, where nothing seems possible for the life, you can have so many different things. For me, it's a challenge to put plants in places like this. The scale of Patrick's vertical vision exceeds that even 
of Gustav Eiffel. He has Babylonian plans to clothe an entire skyscraper in Kuala Lumpur. In the 1960s, the great anthropologist Desmond Morris coined the phrase concrete jungle. But in the future, Patrick Blanc will surely be remembered as the man who jungled concrete. Chris, that is so spectacular. I can only hope that Patrick's on his way over here. Look. Well, he is. I mean, he, there is, he has got a commission to do a hotel in London, but I think his empire is going to stretch worldwide because he's, he's such a big personality and it's such a great idea. And it's beautifully simple. I mean, there is no compost, there is no secret. It is literally just capillary matting, well, nailed to a wall with pockets cut in it, and you shove a hoster in it and drip feed it like hydroponics. So, well, how sustainable is it, though? Do you think it needs replanting every three years? You're going to end up with gaps in it at all? You shouldn't need to replant at all because his argument is that you're using plants which are naturally found in soils and climates of, of high humidity and on rock faces. So they're used to clinging in where there's zero growing medium. Mm. And so it, it, it should be entirely self-sustaining. Yeah. It's about getting, like anything else in gardening, the right plant in the right place and giving it the right nutrition. Well, I mean, as far as things like hostas, I mean, high humidity perhaps, but, you know, not, not rocky places. I mean, how do they manage with no You don't soil, expect to see hostas growing like epiphytes, mm. do you? Like no, those orchids that cling to trees. It's quite amusing. Is there any nutrition in there? Yes, it is, it is just like hydroponics, and they, they have a very carefully balanced system where they're injecting just the right amount of nutrients. But it's all very carefully worked out. And in terms of a client, you know, if you, if you were to have it on your, on your, your home, um, he sets it all up for you, and you just have an extra water tank in the roof. And, and it all just drips feed, and you, you can literally just walk away and... And you and, can and recycle it. it at the end. It's all recycled, that, yeah. and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's perfectly self-sustaining. And so you say he's planning to... to do an enormous tower block in Kuala Lumpur, there... so it's going to be... It's not just sort of four or five storeys. Well, there's a... so many applications for something, especially in an urban environment. You know, there's so yeah. many walls that you could green up. Well, it's so exciting. Well, could do it theoretically, couldn't they? Yeah. You know, once they've got the hang of it, we could all be doing it. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully we will. Thanks very much indeed.